front of me, I have two Strybog SP9A1s. Now, in my last Strybog video, I upset quite a few people. Guys, it is what it is. What I always tell people when they watch our videos is this. We have a sample set of one, usually. We don't usually have more than one. In modern manufacturing, things happen. Things can go wrong, and stuff can be out of spec and cause problems. So never not buy a firearm based on one of our videos, and certainly never sell a firearm based upon one of our videos. Take everything that you see, you read, and what other owners have to say into account for your consideration when purchasing. Now, when you talk about the Strybog SP, SP9A1, it's universally loved, and that's how I started my last video. It gets glowing reviews all over the internet. Everybody seems to love them, so let's see how it shoots. As fate would have it, my first Strybog had problems. The Global Ordnance folks who import the Strybog are extremely cool, very responsive, weren't angry, and immediately sent out another firearm. But they sent me an SP9A1, so it's generationally one behind the one that we had some problems with, and that's because they're waiting on a new shipment of SP9A1s coming in because the thing sells so well, they're that popular. But when I get back from traveling to Georgia this coming week, I will have the latest generation SP9A1, like the one that I had problems with, to do some testing with, and then we'll shoot that gun a whole bunch more. But what I want to show you before we get into the video is this. I haven't fired this gun yet. This is 115 grain Federal American Eagle. With a copper jacketed bullet. This will make your trigger finger tired. Oops. Now we did have malfunctions with this ammunition in the original gun too. And that's why we're starting off with this. My trigger finger is shot. So, zero malfunctions with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven 30 round magazines. I'm going to melt some plastic here. We'll save the 20 rounder for my trigger finger to rest. You get the idea. The Strybog that they sent me looks to be working as it should be, and that is having zero malfunctions with commonly available ammunition. So, let's take a closer look at the Strybog that they sent me. Uh, to replace this one and talk about some of the differences generationally and explain why they made those changes in the most current version of the SP9A1. A third party was able to reproduce the problems I had with the Centec ammunition. The Centec ammunition was designed by Federal to be used competitively for people that shoot steel plates. We shoot steel plates, that's why we have so much of it. This is the PCC ammo, which has a 130 grain bullet in it. It is designed for PCCs pistol caliber carbines, anything with a barrel longer than a handgun, and most handgun barrels are four to five inches in length. In this case, we're talking about an eight inch barrel in the Strybog. But there's something else that went wrong. I don't think it was the, the ammunition itself and the powder charge. I think the reason we were having issues with this particular ammo and feeding and rounds popping out of the magazine is because it is a straight magazine. And in my hand here, I have a Scorpion Evo magazine, which uses a slight curve to it. There's a reason why some companies curve the magazines on 9mm carbines 
and the reason why they curve magazines on weapons like the AK-47. That's because the 9mm case has a slight taper to the wall. It's not a straight walled case. It tapers. When you try to stack two tapered cartridges together in a straight line, there's a gap there for the rounds to move around, and they're naturally going to want to push together to stack more naturally in a curved fashion like you see in the Scorpion magazine. See how they nicely stack and keep the same orientation all the way up to the feed lips? Well, if you can contrast that to a straight magazine, what you're going to see is the bottom rounds in this magazine are pointing up, and as you go up the magazine stack, the nose of the bullet starts to go down. So when you're talking about a magazine like this, I'm going to tap it and, and show you. These are actually shorter rounds. If you take a look at a standard 115 grain ball round, this time we're talking about PMC, if you take a look at a standard ball round, you'll see that there's very little variance in the magazine to allow for any overall length changes. So if you're using a long defensive round or something like that that's not SAMI spec, it might not load or work properly in these magazines. And that's true of any gun. It's not just the Strybog. So let's get back to the straight versus the curved and why we had problems with the, the polymer tipped ammunition. So we had the, the, the rounds here being forced up and they're trying to stack themselves more naturally in a curved fashion. And what they're doing is applying force of the polymer tip against this polymer magazine. And that force is causing it to bind up. And that's why we saw rounds shooting out of the magazine. It only happened with the polymer tip Syntec. We never had that issue with the 115 grain ball. The magazine weirdness was with the Syntec. And this was confirmed by a third party, so just don't shoot Syntec in your Strybog. Simple fix. Now, with the problems that we had with the 115 grain ball, most likely it was either an extractor or an ejector issue with my first test gun. Something slightly out of spec because it wasn't kicking the empties out and they're able to fall back into the action and cause malfunctions or even stovepipe. So, we've already shot 210 rounds in the opening scene and we're going to continue shooting more, but this time we're going to change it up with some PMC 115 grain ball. Not just the Federal, we're going to try some different ammunition. I don't keep a whole bunch of ammunition on hand, and I don't shoot hollow points through PCCs. I, the military doesn't do it. Uh, it's, these guns are designed for ball ammunition. If you're Bill Gates and you can afford to go out and shoot 500 rounds of hollow point defensive ammunition, God bless you. I, that, that's awesome. Uh, most people shoot ball rounds, so that's what we're going to continue our testing with, including ourselves. That's all we typically shoot. All right, so I think that explains why we were having problems with the polymer tipped ammunition and why I'm no longer going to use it and why you probably should avoid it in your Strybog. But that does, doesn't mean there isn't a, a plethora of other 9mm ammunition you can feed your guns. I've been on the Strybog forums, uh, or actually a private Facebook group, and guys are talking about all the different hollow points that successfully work in their guns. So the guns are capable of feeding hollow points based upon other user inputs. I don't have any hollow points to test out here this afternoon. The SP9A1 has gone through a number of different evolutionary changes since it was introduced to the U.S. market in 2018. The first guns that came into the country had a reciprocating charging handle. What that means is when you fire the gun, the charging handle is directly connected to the bolt carrier and it will cycle with the action of the gun. If you were to do a C-clamp style with the charging handle on a reciprocating gun, you would induce a malfunction. You would have to keep your thumb away from the charging handle. Grand Power redesigned the gun, and the later SP9s that came in the country had a detached charging handle, which is non-reciprocating, which means the bolt and carrier move freely and independently of the charging handle. So as you can see in this gun, the bolt's locked to the rear, but the charging handle moves freely. This would allow you to do your C-clamp style of hold if you choose to do so. But there were other changes to the gun that I had in my test video that I wasn't aware of until I received this gun from Global Ordnance to show in video in replacement of this one. Now, as I mentioned in the opening of the video, this is not a current generation gun. This gun that we started the video out with, the video series out with, is the current generation gun. So internally, there's some differences from the previous generation, which is this gun here. It doesn't have a reciprocating charging handle. That remains the same, but internally, there's a big difference. So I'm going to go ahead and we've already confirmed that the gun is clear. I'm going to let it go home. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure, at least with the Mr. Guns and Gear video, he has this version of the gun. And I think even Grantham has this version of the gun based upon his video when I watched it. But I didn't notice the difference until I picked up the replacement gun from Copper. And when I pulled the bolt to the rear, I noticed there was a pull weight difference. And Jason's confirmed this. The earlier gun has a heavier recoil spring. It, it's, it's harder to pull the bolt to the rear than the previous generation which the bolt moves a little bit more easily. So it seems that that's one of the changes is a slightly heavier recoil spring. And I'll explain to you why that may be here momentarily. So let's take this, this earlier generation gun that predates this one apart, has a captive pin, pull that cap, captive pin out. I can accomplish uh, moving this pin with just thumb pressure. Don't yank on it and pull it completely out because you can with any captive pin gun. Don't do that. Just pull it till it stops and then your lower receiver should hinge right down. Now you can take this front pin out if you like, but that's just gonna release the sheet metal bolt hold, which uh, you don't need to do for field maintenance, but if you wanna change this out, just push this pin out, put, this, put a different one in place. They have an extended version that's available on the Global Ordnance website. Put your pin back in, and that's how quick and easy it is to change out your bolt stop and bolt release. Okay, so now to take out the bolt and carrier, I'm just gonna put my thumb right here on the receiver, put my hand around the back of the brace, pull down and straight up. And now I can take the bolt and carrier out. I'm gonna pull up on the charging handle and you'll see that the bolt and carrier are all together and in one piece. But this is what the guys on the Strybog users group are calling the dual rod recoil buffering system. It has this rod and it has the recoil system <clears throat> rod here with the recoil spring over it. All right, this rod, when it's in place, when you pull the bolt to the rear, it fills that void behind the ejector. And so I suspect that rod is there to fill that void purposely. But there are continuing changes to the gun, some pretty big changes a lot of people are talking about, so it's no secret that we're gonna get into when I show you the internals of the newer design. Now keep in mind, this is the older design. Take this gun apart the exact same way. Just make sure that the weapon's clear. Push your pin across. And if you have trouble breaking it loose, you can use the tip of a bullet. I have one there on standby. But usually thumb pressure can do it. Pull that pin out, drop your lower down, take your brace off, pull your charging handle to the rear. And the first thing you're gonna notice is the recoil and buffer spring, or recoil spring and buffer come out independently of the bolt and carrier. First difference, when you drop the bolt, and carrier out, it's very easily achieved in separating the bolt from the bolt carrier. With this one, the rod keeps it together and it would be more difficult to take apart, but it is dovetailed. You can see that I can move this bolt and carrier independently of each other. But the biggest difference is this buffering system. You can see them here side by side. The newer generation on the bottom is just a solid piece of rubber and a recoil rod and spring. The older generation has this rod that fills that void behind the ejector, its recoil spring and guide rod, and then it has a multi-piece buffering system. You have one piece of rubber in the rear, you have a steel piece in the middle here that gives support to this rod, and then you have another piece of rubber in front that collectively work together to make a multi-piece buffering system. Old generation, new generation. So why did they go to this new generation of buffer system? Based upon what the owner of Grand Power has said in these Facebook groups that I frequent now, they are making a change, and this is no trade secret, to the gun. So the next generation, what they call the A3, which I believe is already available in Europe, is roller delayed. So it's using a roller system similar to the MP5. We've not seen any pictures of it, at least I haven't, but I've heard that they're working on a roller delayed version of the gun. This buffering system in the SP9A1s with the blowback are using the recoil system of that next generation gun. So they're slowly making generational changes, rolling them out with the current generation of blowback gun to the ultimate end of being able to release their roller delayed version at some point in the future, and I don't know when. All right, so that's the biggest difference between the two guns is this one has an, a multi-piece buffering system and a rod. This one deletes that rod and has a slightly heavier spring based upon what me and Jason can feel here. I don't have a way to measure it. 
and you can more easily separate the bolt from its carrier unit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and empty the magazine of the Syntec out. We already know that the Syntec could cause problems, but we got the magazine loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and empty it out. I'm gonna seat the magazine. And this is the dual rod design gun, the one that is the replacement. Locks open, ran just fine. All right, now we're gonna transition over to some PMC ammunition. This is 115 grain ball from PMC. An accurate little gun. Some more PMC ball. All the cool guys move around a little bit when they shoot without tripping over the table. Let's test the gun more. I gotta make fun of somebody, have a little fun. <laughs> All right, let's grab another magazine. All right, <laughs> I think you guys get the point. And I'm having a little bit of fun. <laughs> I'm gonna try something though. This gangster stuff doesn't work. All right. Hmm. That last round just popped up. You know what? I think I have a bad magazine. We're going to take this one out of the mix. All right, so we're going to throw this one over there. I think we have a bad mag. All right, let's try that again with a different mag. This is PMC ammo. Why am I doing that? Because I want to make sure the gun's not going to allow ammunition to fall back into the action, and it's not, and that magazine worked just fine. All right, we got one more here. In two scenes, we fired darn near 500 rounds. Hmm. Lock the bolt to the rear. Picked it up that time. All right, locked open. Actually, we'll set that magazine aside too. I don't know where the other one went. Let's do our 20 round magazine. So you can get these with 10, 20, or 30 round magazines. Our friends over at, at Gun Mag Warehouse sent out these extra 30 round magazines and sent me 120 to play with. Locked open just fine. All right, so we've re removed two mags from the mix. They're giving us a last round issue. 
And we saw that in the previous video, so it might just be bad magazines. All right, there you go. Darn near 500 rounds, and we're gonna shoot even more. These are the two mags we had the problems with. I'm gonna go ahead and mark them so I know in the future that they may be the problematic mags. We'll confirm, but I wanted to mark them so I wouldn't get them mixed up again. So far, we've been firing three types of ammunition, not counting that one mag at Syntec, which worked just fine out of the gun that was sent to me, but we've been shooting a PMC 115 grain. We're about to shoot the Fiocchi 124 grain stuff. This is what you've seen in our gauntlet tests. And then we shot our first 200 and some odd rounds, 210 rounds, I believe, of this 115 grain Federal. So that's what we're shooting out here this afternoon. A little bit of a mix of ball. So next up is the Fiocchi 124 grain stuff. Now, one thing I want to point out that both Jason and I noticed, these magazines are 30 round magazines, but you can very easily get 32 rounds into one. Does it cause problems? I don't know. But we discovered this because we just dumped rounds loosely and we're just loading magazines I wasn't counting and I got 32 rounds into it comfortably and we were able to do that with pretty much all of them or all of them. So let's see if it's really a functional 32 round magazine. Feel free to count the rounds guys, I know you do. I love the detail you guys catch. Thirty-two rounds ran flawlessly, and again, you can easily get thirty-two rounds into the thirty-round magazines. That was one hundred and twenty-four grain Fiocchi. This stuff definitely is a little bit warmer. She bump fires. Oh, what happened? Click no bang. Bad round. Okay, not the gun's fault, and I shouldn't be holding this right now. You got focus? Get a good shot. Clearly a very well dimpled round, and now I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> that was a Fiocchi failure, not a Strybog failure. That is the first time in an extremely long time I have seen factory ammunition fail like that. You don't see that very often in modern, modern ammo. Guys, we have fired almost a case of ammunition through this gun and it is having no problems except with these two magazines that we marked. We took these two magazines out of the mix and we had no more failures to feed on that last round. So um, the gun itself seems to be working just fine. I'm looking forward to getting the newest version in my hands when I get back with the updated recoil system. I do like how the gun shoots. I, I, I trust the aftermarket community is gonna step up to this thing. I would like to see a different selector lever, safety lever. But um, the ergonomics are good. I hear the next version will probably even use AR-15 pistol grips. That's one of the rumors. I don't know that I would even change it. I like the, the, the grip angle on this. You also have sights on the gun. The, the front sight sticks out and flexes. It does come with extra sights. Somebody said that there are steel sights, but these feel polymer to me as well. I'd have to scrape them with a knife to test. But it has flip-up sights, but you also have the option of not flipping the sights up and it has basic, basically pistol sights. You have a front blade here and a rear V-notch here, but you can flip them up 
Well, they co-witness. Yep, you know what? And they co-witness through uh, get a very, very lower third, but they co-witness through this hollow sun optic. And they look pretty much close to being on, just a little bit low. So the sights on both these guns seem to line up with the dots. Very interesting. If I recall right, one of the posters on one of the discussion threads, either in my video or on the Facebook group, talked about their magazines binding up at the, at the very end, not feeding that last round or having feed issues. This is one of the spray painted mags. They said they sprayed the mag with oil, which is something I don't normally do. And then, whoop, that's so slippery I dropped around. One for my homies, let me grab that. It hit my foot and I can find it easily. Otherwise it disappears in this prairie grass. All right, so I'm gonna load this magazine up, guys. This is the oiled one. Oh yeah, it's definitely loading easier. Oh wow, that's a world of difference. A little bit of lubricant may go a long way in these magazines, guys. I may have just spray paint on my magazine for no reason. It definitely makes loading the magazine super easy. Before you had a little bit more resistance with that oil, man, this thing's loading up super simple easy. I think that might be the magic sauce. A little bit of oil in this dry bog mag. I thought I was gonna have to throw two mags away. I don't think I will now. Yep, let's try 32. 32 fits comfortably. Count them out, guys. You're good at it. Here we go. And let's see if this magazine locks open, feeds and locks open with that last round. A little bit of oil made that magazine work perfectly. So if you're having problems with your magazines not feeding properly or not um, feeding that last round, shoot a little bit of Earl in there and your magazine works just fine. So the Strybog that we have, our second test sample, is running flawlessly. Uh, by the time we fire off the last couple of magazines, including our B-roll, we will have fired over 1,000 rounds this afternoon through the gun. And we did no maintenance to the gun, kind of like Grand Thumb did. We just kind of ran it the way it was shipped to us. We did put oil in the magazines because I've discovered that really does make a difference in how they load and probably increases reliability. So it's something you may want to consider doing if you have a stride bog and uh, you have those mags, you might want to put a little bit of oil in them. Doesn't hurt them. So what do I think of the gun overall? This particular gun, I really enjoy shooting. It has M-lock rails out here. This is a solid piece of aluminum receiver. The bottom is polymer. You have complete ambi controls. You have a mag release on both, both sides of the gun. And you also have an ambi bolt stop and bolt release. Now, I'm not a fan of this particular bolt release. I probably wind up picking up the extended one just because it'll make it a little bit easier. Uh, the backup sights seem to be on with both of the test samples I have. I'll have a, a third test sample here shortly. And um, yeah, generally speaking, it's a very comfortable, easy gun to shoot. The SB Tactical Brace folds nicely to the side. And um, I, I know what you guys are gonna ask. Does it cycle with the brace folded to the side? I don't know. It's covering that ejection port. I'm gonna say no, but let's find out. Brace is folded to the side. I'll shoot it into the dirt here. It works, <laughs> that's incredible. I mean, check this out. Look how little room there is for that spent case to get out of there. Jason, come on around to the other side, man. This is pretty cool. I didn't think it would be able to do it. Check this out. <laughs> I was gonna say it probably wouldn't. See, that's why you test things. All right, guys. So at $699, I mean, the construction of the gun is quality. Both the guns I have in terms of fit and finish are really, really good. The first gun I'm gonna write off is a fluke. It happens. This gun is, uh, is really, really kind of cool. It does have a half by 28 thread here on the end with its neural thread protector. Uh, in the future, we will run it suppressed and give you guys some feedback on that. And I think pretty much everything else has been covered by other reviewers. All right, so we're gonna sign off with one last magazine of the Fiocchi 124 grain ball. Just a reminder, the two bad mags we thought were bad, oil fixed. 
Gun had zero malfunctions with the three different types of ammunition we brought out, and also it had no malfunctions with a couple of magazines of Syntec that we fired through it, ironically. All right, so guys, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, we are supported by you. We can only bring you these videos with your support. We don't take money from the gun companies. We are supported by our viewers so we can be as unbiased as humanly possible. So there's a link down below. Please consider following that link and becoming part of our Patreon family where you get extra content, blog posts, and also access to a private Facebook group. Also swing by and check out coppercustom.com. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for 11 years of support. Almost 12 come the first of the year. We're gonna call it 12, man. That's a long time. Thank you for watching, guys.